I did not think we would see this for a long time until Ilya Tapuria came into the mix. And already, no rematch. I don't want to hear this where we're talking about Volk against Ilya Tapuria. Yes, the first round was competitive where they're both trading leg kicks, but Volkanovski's leg kicks are way better. And because Ilya Tapuria's feet are planted into the ground, they're having a significant effect. But you did actually have a crowd of people thinking that Ilya Tapuria won that first round because... There was a few times in the fight where he wasn't really landing that much, but when he landed, it kind of made Volkanovski back up towards the cage. But because he was always circling out and attacking the legs and even mixing up some high kicks at times earlier on in the fight, I believe he won that first round. But just because you win a competitive first round doesn't mean you deserve a rematch because you go into the second round. Ilya Tapuria makes some very good adjustments. For example... You'll see right here, Volkanovski catches him with like a stiff jab to the face. And one thing you'll notice with Ilya Tapiria is, he's one of them boxers where he's always moving his head off the center line. But also, when he's throwing a punch, he'll move his head off the center line as well. You'll notice there's some fighters where they'll move their head, but as they're throwing punches, they don't move their head as well in sync. Ilya Tapiria is one of those guys. So as Volkanovski catches him with a jab, he's like, right, I need to move my head more. So, as Volkanovski goes to throw another jab, he's able to counter him by moving his head off the center line. And then punches push Volk backwards. And one thing I've noticed with Volk as well, especially in this fight, his chin is coming up very high when he's going backwards. And I believe he's biting on quite a few of the feints of Tapiria. So, you're seeing Volkanovski like put his hand out, not looking at the target. And that is leaving that left hand side of Ilya Tapiria so open to throw those hooks. But we know Ilya Tapiria doesn't always headhunt. He's actually quite smart. Especially after watching that Jai Herbert fight, which God knows how he knocked down Ilya Tapiria. But in this fight here, he sees that Volkanovski's chin's coming up. So what does he have to do? Just a level change. Keep level changing in the fight. And because Volkanovski is used to fighting taller guys, this could be a problem. Because if you're the same height as the opponent, when he's coming down lower, you've got to now point your jab lower down towards the target compared to... When you were fighting these taller guys, you're coming straight and maybe arching your arm a bit upwards. So against Ilya Tapiria, it's creating a matchup which he hasn't really had in a long time since like the Chad Mendes fight. And I bring up that because he was a similar height to him compared to a lot of the other fighters who Volkanovski was fighting who are much taller than him. Like Max Holloway, much taller. Yair Rodriguez, taller. Islam Makashev, taller. And now he comes up against a power like... Don't know how to describe Ilya Tapiria's like shape, but a smaller guy. And then he catches Volk with a shot to the back of the ear, not the back of the head, back of the ear, with like his forearm that doesn't really do much damage, but it's pushing Volk back against the cage. And at this point, you're seeing Ilya Tapiria put himself in like second gear, going up all the way to fifth gear. And then because he's being pressed up against the cage, again, Volkanovski, he is not looking at the target. And now Volkanovski is trying to return with a punch as Ilya Tapiria is coming forward. But it's like a desperation punch because he's not even looking at the target, unfortunately. So Ilya Tapiria being smart, he measures the distance as Volkanovski is trying to throw like a Hail Mary hook and hope it lands. And because he's grabbing onto the shoulder of Volk, he's able to place it perfectly. And this is the initial punch that takes out his lights. And all of this happens because Volkanovski is not defending himself properly in this moment because he's biting on a lot of the feints. He's staying up near the cage now whilst Ilya Tapiri is backing him up. He's not circling out and he's looking to return back. And it just leads to him being slept unconscious. And it's making me think that Volkanovski's durability is fading. And it is because of the age. Plus the damage he's taking. Like, Volkanovski... It's not like he hasn't been dropped in fights. He's been dropped multiple times, but he gets up usually. And that was when he was younger. Look at him now. He's about 35. He is 35 years of age at featherweight. You can get away with it when you're a heavyweight and you're getting older and in the heavier weight classes. But when it comes down to the lighter weight classes where speed is much more required and Ilya Tapiria had a lot of that with the power, you can't expect to keep doing that and he's very active as well so him being active it's like a compounding effect and he just 
came back way too soon. Like, imagine a world where he doesn't fight Islam Makashev. A lot of you would probably say Ilya Tapiria would have lost this fight. Volkanovski fans, but I disagree. I was always going to pick Tapiria. You can have a look back. Like, we did very good on the predictions, by the way, today. Like, we got 11 out of 12. I don't know why I picked Sahudo deep down. It made sense on paper. But then I should have looked at the age and then realised that was a stupid pick. But apart from that, we did very well. Round two, and... He did what I thought he would do by coming low to the body, which we didn't see a lot in the first round. It was a lot of fating and being patient whilst Volkanovski was trying to make a read on him by changing stance and trying to attack the outside of the leg, try and damage the perennial nerve, make it harder to stand on his feet like that. But for Volk, he's going to have to look at taking other fights or retire. I know it might be way too early for you to say, oh, retire. If I was Volk right now, I probably would, but I know he wants to fight all the time, so I can't really say that, but he can't get a rematch straight away. Like, if you watch the press conference, I was just watching a bit of it now, like the post-fight press conference, he's talking about a rematch and stuff, and he's giving Ilya Tapiria credit, but it's like credit where he's like, he's fast, you know, it seems a little bit salty in a way. I don't know, you're going to have to go and watch it, but from what I'm hearing from Volk, he's like, all credit to him. But then says something like, he's going to celebrate with his family and don't expect them to be that active because when a guy gets a belt, oh my God, I'm probably going to mess this up. But this is on the lines of what he said. They don't defend the belt straight after, which is kind of true when a new guy wins the belt. Look at people like Jamal Hill. Um, I'm, I can't really say the same about Sean Strickland because he tried to, but Duplessis was injured. And yeah, he's got a point with that. But it's like, He's kind of annoyed, but I don't blame him because he's probably concussed right now. Took a lot of damage from the last two fights. So getting brutally knocked out. Durability is fading. He is looking good in fights, but he just can't take a punch like he used to. And if you can't take a punch like you used to, well then, if you have a rematch of Ilya Tapiria, the same thing's going to happen. And I believe if they fought again, Volkanovski would put in a better account of himself again. But he'd end up getting knocked out in the end because his body can't function like it used to in terms of like taking a shot. It's like his brain's telling him one thing, but his body can't. His body's going to shut down when he takes a clean shot. And Volkanovski, he used to be able to take these, like I've mentioned before, but he can't. Too old. And you get brutally knocked out by a lightweight. Like when he is getting finished now, these are knockouts which are like flatlining him. He's going to end up, not on the Tony Ferguson decline, because I believe there are some featherweights that he can beat. He'd obviously be like the lower ranked featherweight, so he could beat a Brian Ortega. But it's the ones where, like, even a Max Holloway, he could beat again. But it's the fact that when he comes up against these harder hitting guys, like, if he goes up to lightweight, he's going to get chinned a lot. Like, he's in a situation where he can't even just do that, like, just move up to lightweight. That's not a good solution, because the chin's not holding out. And... Tapiria will get the credit he deserves because he's the complete package. A bit like Tom Aspinall, he's got everything. They're not the same fighter, but I'm just saying, like, you're seeing these balanced fighters do much better now where they've got a good base in all areas, and so does he. Like, if they fight again, Volkanovski can't just do a wrestling approach. Like, there's so many approaches that you could try, but because of his chin, unfortunately, which has never been bad, but he's getting older now, like I keep mentioning, it's not going to work. So I'm not going to say about Holloway and yeah, yeah, I'm going to do a video in the week talking about um, which UFC fighter I think could beat him, like with the ranks. I'm not going to do top tier and all that anymore. I'll just do A, B, C, D. But yeah, Volkanovski, in my opinion, on the decline because of age and because of his chin, not his offensive ability. But anyways, yeah. Thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.